Welcome to The Weekly, a podcast brought to you by Calvary Bible Church with your hosts Jay and Melissa is in the room with me today. We are at episode The Book List coming up right here. It's beginning to be fallish someday soon? No, it is so hot and miserable out there. No, our pumpkin spice was on the shelf this That week. does not mean it it's mean almost there. Yeah, that I feel like they put it out coming. in like August 1st. No, listen, if you can buy Cheerios and pumpkin spice, it's fall. Mm, Jay, do you have Halloween decorations up already? No, but my son does. This is does. a safe place. You can tell us. Hey, we have a special guest today. Like always, the book list is our recommendations for those at Calvary just to read along with us. Enjoy some of these books that we've been reading and just appreciate some of the diverse ideas that happen in the Christian community, as well as some helpful resources for you and your bookshelf. Melissa, have I said enough about that? Yes. Thank you. It's pumpkin. It's PSLU. <laughs> that, if you can buy that at Starbucks, it's fall. No, it's mm. not fall until like the temperature starts dropping a little bit. Hey, we right? have a special guest as well today. We have a really great friend of ours, a sister-in-law, in fact, of mine, Michelle Gaskins, is in the booth. Hi, Hello. Michelle. Welcome. Hi, thank you. So good to be here. Michelle is a local therapist in the area, which is sounds like really adulting right there. <laughs> Seriously, she, this is actually going to just be a just, therapy session for me. I no, how to handle Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she has to do that with her sister anyways. But Michelle has a master's in Christian counseling, right? Clinical mental health oh, counseling. Yeah. Thank you. But I from Denver, Denver Seminary. Denver so, yeah. Yeah. Good, and then also stuff. graduated from DBU long ago, which is Dallas mm-hmm. Baptist University. A trusted guide and friend, especially in this topic. <laughs> Seriously. For better, I'm for excited. worse. Yeah. Yep. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Melissa, share with Calvary what we are reading and sort of a brief summary. Yeah. Uh, So the book we picked for this month is This Too Shall Last by K.J. Ramsey, um, and it's about finding grace when suffering lingers. So one thing she says, it feels like over and over in the book, is that uh, it's not a before and after story. It's a middle story, which often we cringe from telling our middle stories. We want to tell the after story of how things got better, how we were healed, how God did something amazing in our lives. But most of us live in that middle space. Um, So I'll just read from Amazon. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, It says, Our culture treats suffering like a problem to fix, a blight to hide, or the sad start of a transformation story. We silently, secretly wither under the pressure of living as though suffering is a predicament we can avoid or annihilate by having enough faith or trying harder. When your prayers for healing haven't been answered, the fog of depression isn't lifting, your marriage is ending in divorce, or grief won't go away, it's easy to feel you've failed God, or, even worse, that he's failed you. If God loves us, why does he allow us to hurt? Thanks so much. Yeah, this book is anyone who is suffering, anyone who loves someone who's suffering, or anyone who thinks they will suffer someday. So that's for everyone. Oh, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This book is about suffering, and it's about the middle story, and it's a raw story. Mm -hmm. It's told in a way that is, there's a lot of power in her story, just because it's told from, she's a great writer, but also she's very honest about her story. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michelle, what do you think, overall view of this book, and who would you, you know, say needs to pick this book up? Sure. That's a, that's a big question. Um, yeah, this book is incredible. I mean, I personally picked it up. It was gifted to me by a sweet friend, Kendra Grove. And, um, I personally, you know, picked it up in a time of, I would say intense suffering in my life and still am in that season, you know, unfortunately. And so, um, I would say this book is really for anyone, like you said, who is in the middle of their own suffering, whether physical, mental, emotional, um, or if you know someone who is, it's for, I would really say the church too. Um, I think that she does an incredible job of helping us as Christians understand what does it look like to suffer and to come alongside Mm -hmm. those who are suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So the author um, has a chronic illness 
And so that's kind of what the premise of the book is about her story of what that looks like. And, you know, so often um, when somebody is sick or hurting or we are very, I think people in general, Christians specifically, are very quick to, you know, offer the platitudes that we've already heard or ask them, have you prayed for healing or things like that. And so she talks about the experience of meeting Jesus in the middle of that before the healing comes or when you might not know if it's coming or not. Super good. Yeah. Super good. Yeah. In fact, Michelle's responsible for us reading this book Mm -hmm. because I was caught by the title more than anything when you were reading it and thought, wow, what a thoughtful approach to framing suffering. Yeah. And it's helpful for those who don't, who aren't in a season of suffering or who've come through it to maybe reframe their views on suffering. Cause so many times once you get past suffering, you celebrate like the end story right. and that's where the power is because you should, you know, you share the beginning and the end, but really this book like you're saying, is about the middle part of the journey. And it's probably the most powerful, actually. Yeah. Yeah. More f- most formative, probably. Yeah. 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 And it's hard. I think it's, I think the reason it's hard in the church specifically is because we do have so much incredible truth, right? Mm-hmm. That we're always seeking to know and, um, and having shared with us. And so it's really easy to come alongside people and just say, oh yeah, you're suffering, but here's this truth and don't forget this. And I think what we miss then in that is um, she has this line uh, in the book where she says, accepting grace and suffering is not just knowing truth about God's goodness. It's being seen by God and community. Mm -hmm. Um, And wow, I think that's just what we often miss is just making space for people to be seen, having their voices be heard and experiencing God and being seen by him in the middle of suffering and not just having truth be thrown at us. Yeah, Yeah. because when in that lingering suffering when we're there or, and it doesn't have to be, you know, maybe it's even we've had a death in our family and why is it taking you so long to get over Mm -hmm. that? Like, you know, like just move on with your life, just get on to the next thing, you know, those things. But I think uh, we get messages in our head that we're worthless or that we're different than other people when we're stuck in that suffering. And, you know, part of that is uh, Satan doing his work in our mind and leading us to believe that when it's not true. And then the other part of it is just our general comfortability with suffering, with, you know, sharing our deep, dark hurts with each other where we're at and not not being shunned or turned away. Yeah, Yeah. It's super hard when I found myself in suffering, I feel more alone. Mm -hmm. And then the alone and isolation actually keeps me from Totally. Yeah. Being known in that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of the best things for her that was just spoken to me was that the community must join in suffering. And that's, that's a really hard thing for a community to do if they don't know best approaches to that. And this book is a really helpful guide for some thoughtful approaches to stepping alongside someone who's in a season of suffering and not in a way that's, um, you know, cheesy or hurtful, but actually just really thoughtful and practical of simple things like just showing up and watching a movie with someone or, you know, she talks about her friends sitting on her couch on endless afternoons. Mm-hmm. And this is so important for us to remember. You don't actually have to have the answers. All you have to do is just show up. You know, the thing I love most about that story where she talked about her friend is she talked about in the middle of her darkness and pain, how hard it was for her to get up and answer the door and let that friend in. Mm -hmm. But then I also loved her talking, her friend, then confessing later at how awkward it felt for her, because I think that's what scares us all away. But to acknowledge the awkwardness and be able to sit in that is, is the gift, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the ultimate part of being seen is we're just willing to say or feel all of those things instead of in our discomfort trying to you know wish someone's pain away or Mm -hmm. throw a bible verse at them instead of sitting in the discomfort and noticing what goes on in our own bodies when we sit with someone who's suffering right because we have a it's just a natural thing to just uh to want to have a quick response or to just fix it and so I think 
especially as a counselor, honestly, I feel like one of the most incredible things I got to learn in grad school that just as a human that I'm so thankful for is how to just sit with people. Mm. Um, I'm a like self-proclaimed Enneagram too. So like I'm a fixer and I hate when people are hurting. I just want to fix it and I want to help them. And so it takes a lot for me to just sit and just listen and actually just sit in silence. It's crazy how much that can just be what people need and what they want. And especially in an intense suffering like you said losing a family member or yeah I mean it's we don't know what to say and often just sitting with someone and letting them be seen and feel heard is the best thing we could do for them without saying a word Mm -hmm. yeah so let's talk about some highlights of the book and sort of highlights of why someone should be reading this book Mm -hmm. more importantly and um this book is written so well like I I'm so it's been a good year for reading because there's been some great writers that I've I've read this year, but this is like the cream of the cream. And I I think that helps sometimes us to stay engaged with the the book and the story because of the writing. So that's like one of my great highlights takeaway is like, it's not only an important topic, the subject matter is life changing, but the writing is just done so well. Right. I think it's really neat that she, so KJ Ramsey, the author, is both a, she's also a therapist, clinical mental health therapist, and has done, I believe, some theological studying as well. And so when she's writing this book, the thing, one of the biggest takeaways for me and things that I'm so appreciative of is how she can talk about the neurobiology Mm -hmm. and what's happening in your body along with the spiritual pieces, because I think another thing in the church that you know um we may be a little bit slower to understand sometimes or to look at or actually give concern to is is what's happening in our brains and bodies and I think it's so cool how she just talks about like for example she talks about how being heard actually rewires your brain and it's this cool thing where we're now able to know things about our brain and it's like God's giving us this kind of insight and sort of instruction manual that goes along with all of these things in scriptures like mm-hmm. where two or more yeah. are gathered in your name I am there you know and how um, bearing with one another in suffering like those are these are things that we have always been instructed to do and now even more as she writes um, we can understand why it's yeah. so powerful because God actually designed our brains to work this way and it's so incredible and I feel like just reading it, I think for me, it was just even a worshipful experience of learning so much of how, wow, God, like you um, created us to grieve and suffer Mm -hmm. in this way, in community, within the church, because of how you made us. And it's so cool to see all the pieces come together. It's so much more than just, hey, it's good for you and you're suffering to do this. It's like, no, like your brain will thrive when you do this in suffering. One of the best reflections theologically of that is for those who think that's scary. I don't know. The scripture talks about like when the psalmist says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. One of the ways in which we find wonder is our actually discovery of what we are and who we are. Yeah. And I think she does a great job of the, yeah, marrying those two theologically rich truth along with this is actually what is the human experience. Yeah. And just thinking about how, uh, that pain, um, whether it's short term, long term, whether it's emotional, physical, like pain is our body's way of pointing out to us that something is wrong. Like that, there's something needs our attention. That we need to be paying attention to something. And so, just checking in with that, and you know, what is our body trying to tell us? And and God, not meeting us on the other end of that with the healing, but meeting us in that pain. Mm-hmm. I love that. Like that's such a beautiful picture and you know like you were saying like he came he came to earth as a human so he could fully experience all the different emotions that we have I mean not just you know we like to think about that in terms of like so that he could see what it was like to like you know step on a rock and hurt his foot but like to actually have his heart broken or to 
be in relationship with a friend that walks away or those like really hard things like to think Jesus experienced that Mm -hmm. and then he gets to be in the midst of our pain not waiting on the other side to meet us but right there with us and I just think that's so cool that's really cool yeah she she says in one of the chapters uh, Jesus embodies life changes everything about ours Mm -hmm. and she says you know, she just talks about how he wasn't acting at being human. He was fully yeah. human. And yeah, it just, it matters. Yeah. My favorite quote, obviously, was a Diedrich Bonhoeffer quote. Oh, and it says, right, right. It says only the suffering God can help. Mm. And I think that's really important when we think about Jesus is that he, he actually suffered more than any other human being because at the point of his sorrows, he was sweating and yeah. his suffering blood. And I think that's like, None of us have done that in our sorrows yet that I know of. I haven't seen that. I haven't experienced that. Yeah. And he went fully to the max of human mm-hmm. in order to experience all that we would someday, his own would go through. Yeah. And that he's recreating us in that pain, not in the healing of it. Like that's, our hearts are being changed in the hard part, not when everything's better. I right. Like that. Yeah. That's another reflection from this book, right? Is like actually... There is hope in suffering because it's formative in our own, not that it's it maybe it never get fixed in on this side, but it's formative in who God is making us even when we are in the middle story of suffering. Yeah. So Michelle, I loved hearing uh, you talk about how to sit with people. Do you have words of advice for us in that? Like if somebody is in pain, what's the... What's the best help that we can be? You know, I mean, there's so many ways that we can help. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. I think something that's so big is knowing, you know, we are, if we truly believe we're the body of Christ, right? Then Mm -hmm. in that moment, you are fully representing the gospel to someone and representing Christ to them and you are getting to be present with them Mm -hmm. and so something that I often think about like when I sit with clients is that I get to regulate Mm. so I get to come in as a person who can sit and listen and just absorb Mm -hmm. and I don't have to be someone that they're worried about is going to be impacted by what they say right especially when a lot of people feel like a burden or feel like they don't want to upset someone or make them feel sad or bad and I'm I'm guilty of that too right even in my own marriage when my husband loves to comfort me and listen I just sometimes I'm like oh but it's too much for Mm -hmm. him it's so sad it's so hard and so to just go in and have this openness of I just get to be a physical human person that is representing God that is just listening yeah. and just sitting and they don't have to worry about my feelings or what I'm thinking. Um, I think when you turn your attention fully to them, people can feel that. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes when we're in our own head sitting there going, oh no, what am I going to say? What Bible verse am I yep. going to pull out? Right. Yep. Like people can feel that they really can. And so it just shifts so much when you just come in and almost almost like emptying your own mind to listen to what they're, to really listen to them. And when you do, I think what happens is then you can go, wow, you know, Melissa, it sounds like you are going through so much right now and I can't imagine how that would feel or that must be so hard. And just even reflecting back, um, and by reflecting, I mean, you're kind of saying something that shows that I was paying attention and I heard you Mm -hmm. and this is what that sounds like to me reflecting to them their emotion and actual facts of what they said in content and that tells people hey I'm here and I'm listening to you Um, and it's amazing how if you practice that without um, needing to give advice in that moment or needing to say anything else if you just practice reflecting what someone's saying to you it's crazy how then people you can almost see them physically just sometimes let go Mm -hmm. and they will just feel safe and maybe even open up even more and start sharing even more because what you've done is you've shown them hey I'm a safe person and I'm not going to push past any boundaries or offer you any unsolicited advice like Mm -hmm. I'm just here and you can be whoever you need to be right now whether that's crying and laying on the floor or you know holding back tears I'm not scared yeah I'm just here yeah just being present yeah and that you're not going to go anywhere or change your opinion of them based on whatever happens in that moment or any of that that's a beautiful thing yeah that's a really good 
just helpful reminder for all of us to when we encounter that some of the really practical things we could do mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah and I think even um I've found in the past in relationships if I can be vulnerable and share something it opens up so it's really hard if you're in the midst of deep 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 suffering just to open up and share that with somebody that you don't already have that relationship established with. Right. So I think, you know, most people that we know aren't in the middle of that deep of suffering, but we've all experienced it. And so if we can be authentic about it when we're experiencing it, even if it doesn't seem like a huge, like, oh, Michelle's suffering is so much worse than mine. Why would I share that with her? Why would I burden her with this tiny thing going on in my life when she's at such a different level of suffering, but that's how we establish the rapport with each other and the trust with each other is by sharing even this, those little things, you know? Oh, really good. Yeah. So how has, I guess the question for both of you would be, how has the landscape of a season of suffering shaped how you view the Christian community? That has Michelle's name written all over oh it. No, I'm goodness. just kidding. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> that is a great question. Um, man, that's a lot. I feel like we could do a podcast on every single <laughs> chapter that, or literal page that she writes. So, right. um, you know, I think in my own personal experience and for some context, like I have had some physical pain for about, almost over, almost two years now that has just been relentless. So every day I wake up in pain and it's not like it's hard and it's, you know, um, it's not just like, Oh, I have a crick in my neck today or maybe it'll come back tomorrow. It's there every day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's relentless. And so what I'm often walking around feeling is like, I just need relief. Yeah. And that's how I tend, that's the lens with which I'm viewing my days and it's hard and it takes a lot of paying attention to and so something that I have really found uh that it that was so encouraging in her book and that I just continue to learn is how like you said it's when we're in and she talks about this too like when your brain is in a place of suffering especially like some with something like pain Mm -hmm. um you have so much attention on it and your body's just trying to survive and that really kind of takes all your resources mentally, physically, emotionally. Mm. And so the thing to be aware of too, like why it's so important that we're in community is that when I'm like, can't keep my head above water, right? Like when I am just like at the most of all my capacities in any way, I need people. Um, And it can feel so lonely to be in that space of suffering every day. And it's when we get in those spaces where, that's when the enemy absolutely Mm -hmm. can work so much. And so I think it's, but even more than that, it's, that's how God works in our suffering, in our community is he has created it to be a space where we're seen and where by bringing things to the light, that's where hope is. Mm -hmm. And um, even just in her line, I have so many like quote. I love it. I just typed up so many quotes because it's just every page. It was like, oh man, but she says, um, I missed learning. So she's talking about growing up in the church. I missed learning that suffering is an expected part of being God's child and that sharing it is where hope or where hope will rise. Some things unspoken can't be known. Mm -hmm. And so just talking about how like when we don't say things right in our communities, when we don't bring them to light, they can't be known. And often our community is a reflection of, of God. Right. And it's, um, so when I'm not able to share something and I'm holding it inside, that's often an indication that I'm also not showing that to the Lord and I'm not Mm -hmm. maybe asking for his help or fully revealing it. And so, oh, there's just, there's, I feel like there's so many things in this, but ultimately it's this concept of, she talks about bearing witness and that's what we do in community with one another. And that's truly how we find hope is by saying things out loud, by being seen by having people around us who can just be there. It really, Mm. for me, has been probably the most important thing that I've had in this season is just a life group willing to sit there when I'm sobbing and just exhausted and saying, 
you guys, you can't even fix it. Yeah. You can't. But just by listening to me and being here with me, mm-hmm. um, it really does. It has just shaped this season. And I can, I feel God's presence by my community bearing witness and having hope for me when I cannot. Yeah. So Melissa, how does someone find community like that? Sign How up. have you found community Sign like up for that? life clubs at calvarybible.com slash, I'm just kidding. I don't even yeah. know the link, but yes, I, I mean, life groups have been super important. Um, I think vulnerability is so huge. Like I think that's, that's the thing that suffering seasons have taught me in my life is how important it is to be vulnerable with people and trust that if those are the right people, they're going to stick around. And if they don't stick around and they're scared off by that vulnerability, then that wasn't, you know, the relationship that God wanted me to have in my life. But yeah, so I think um, just showing up for people, like I think we tend to look around at everybody's life and say, oh gosh, Jay's so busy. Like here, he's this pastor at this church. And every time I go to Fox Dog, he's having coffee and talking with someone and, you know, that sort of thing. But to understand that Jay still wants that invitation or Michelle, Michelle still wants that invitation or Melissa does. I mean, just for all of us, like people are looking for community and not to be scared off because you think they're too busy or, you know, their life is perfect. And so why would they want something else in it? Yeah, totally. And I would say even in the small things, like if they can't show up to help you move or like, you know, um, move something in your backyard or, you know, talk to your kids or things like that, like those are indicators of maybe what kind of community they would create Mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. Eventually. And so it's like seeing the small things, which friends actually text, which friends actually call you, which friend, you know, want to hang out with you yeah those are some of the people that you can slowly start to trust in seasons of that you'll find yourself in and if you don't if you're not in a season of suffering now this is a perfect time totally. to get great friends yes, right <laughs> you don't want to do this when <laughs> you're in suffering now. yeah <laughs> yes. totally you know and we we talk a lot about that like it's really hard to put up plywood in a hurricane yes. you know like that is not when you want to be trying to nail down plywood Mm -hmm. but it is the days ahead before the sunny days the bluebird days when everyone else is goofing off that's a good day to put up plywood yeah and that's the same with friendship and community is don't wait right build that up relational equity now yeah and it's not it's not that you say someday you're gonna owe me no it's it's like someday i'm gonna need you yeah and i need a people that will need will have to show up yeah. on my worst days. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. How do you find community, Jay? I think vulnerability is really good. Um, I think often, you know, with these words, we we pull, pull around. Actually, I would say it takes a longer time than you think it does. Oh, for sure. And it takes more failures than successes, mm-hmm. and that's a a process that takes a long time. Yeah. And the reality of great friends is that they're few and far between. Mm-hmm. And when they are, they're gifts from God and don't, don't neglect them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's huge. The don't neglect them piece of it. Right. Cause right. it's, it's work. Like every relationship is work and you know, it's not just about waiting for them to text you or how often would they check in with you, but also just like, Hey, if they're on my brain, I should probably check in with them and right. what are you doing? You know? And I have friends that are so good at that, you know, just a random text on a random day. And, you know, with certain friends, I'd be like, oh, why are they asking me this? Like, is there expectation that I, you know, that I'm, that they want, want me to do something? Do they need (laughs) something from me right now? And then it's like, okay, back down, Melissa. Like, (laughs) just checking in to see how your day is. Projection much? (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) It's totally it. Totally. That's interesting. Okay. So let's talk about this final, I think. You know, we're, we're reaching 30 minutes already into this podcast and we haven't even scratched the surface, so but the book. how does suffering, this is, I, I want a really good reflection on how does suffering um, remind you of the faithfulness of God or how can it, or it's just, how does it? That's an easy one. Let me just, I'm just kidding. That is, <laughs> I was like, wow. I'm like, I know. 
Jay's really with the doozy Sorry, can questions you, Can today. you just, one more time. For the listeners, really, not for me. <laughs> How does suffering help your view of the faithfulness of God? Let me say it that way. <laughs> it's so, this is so hard. And it's... It's the, it, you know, it's not the end of the rainbow type right. end of the conversation, but I want it to be, you know, yeah, this no, is... No, I think it's just the day-to-day survival of it, right? Like, I mean, sometimes you can be hurting either physically or emotionally um, so bad that sometimes you're surprised you wake up the next morning, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, this is still... But he, knowing that God is there with you in that through every moment of that um yeah it's just it causes you to be faithful it builds your faith right yeah I think something I've been thinking about a lot and again she has this line where she says grace is not always rescue Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and oh man you know like as much as I would love to wake up one day and be without pain Mm -hmm. right like that's not, that hasn't been my reality yet. And so I think for me, it's been this question of, is, is God faithful? And how, how do I experience that? Or what do I both know to be true and can still experience about his faithfulness in the midst of suffering? Which is why I think she wrote this book is to answer that question that you're asking us. Cause it's, that is the question that, you know, we ultimately are asking is, is God faithful? Who is he in this? And um, I don't even know if I'm answering your question anymore, yeah. but I think it's just, for me, it's looked like knowing that God invites me in to himself yeah. in the middle of suffering. Mm-hmm. And in that, there is peace and kindness and love um, and that I can be fully known in the middle of my suffering is a part of how I experience God's faithfulness in it. And yeah, I mean, there's so much I feel like we could say and, and, and answering this, but um, yeah, for me, that's been a lot of the big part of experiencing him in this season. Right. That reminds me of a personal story and most people don't know this, but my dad is quadriplegic. And one time he told me he, had it pr- he had prayed a long time for God to heal him, mm-hmm. right? And now he was so thankful that God hadn't because yeah. heaven was going to be so much more Sweet. the place. And, you know, and that's like a guy who's lived through suffering. And it's just the reality that the faithfulness of God is not dependent that you win mm-hmm. or right? you succeed yeah. or suffering goes away. The faithfulness of God is that he has a plan. He knows what he's doing. And regardless of what we see or know or experience, there's even something greater that is beyond that moment or those seasons or that life. Yeah. She has a really good quote that I have to read. Sorry. I know we're coming up on time. No, it's great. Jay looks at the time, but I never do. Get ready. This is three sentences. Just, you know. If you're in this podcast, you're in this podcast. You're in it. You're in it. Also, just. Just put the book in your Amazon card. Just do it. So I don't have to sit here and read it to you because it's so good. Okay. So it says, we who are weak remind the entire church that salvation comes only through God and not through our self-sufficient striving. Mm. Our cries help the church hear the truth that our shared story is not finished. The mighty kingdom of God has not fully come and the small kingdoms of this world offer only a puny plastic imitation of the freedom and joy we were made for. Oh, that's probably the so best good. quote. Mic drop. <laughs> that one. And we're done. This is like every page of the book, though. It's yeah, just that's right. Yeah. It's really true. After nugget, it really after is. nugget. It yeah. Really, but yep. I think, yeah. She's writing a second book right now, which her Instagram told me. I'm like, I wouldn't even try. Oh, man. Because you've used up all your words in one shot. <laughs> like, oh, just don't even, don't even start to write another she book. incredible. Yeah. But also, you'll be the first one in line to buy it. Yes. <laughs> See if she used up all her words. Did you use up all your words? Because I think you did. I sent her a snail mail letter already and asked for a copy you before did. she didn't start writing it. I so love I'm it. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love it. That's no, so it is about, yeah, like, that is a, a reality that, like, the kingdom of God, mm. even though it's unseen so many times now, 
is really the real thing of the human experience. Yeah. And when we try to avoid, negate, escape. fix, yeah, yeah, escape, all those things, we miss out mm-hmm. on the real, I would say, I want to say nectar yeah. <laughs> of life. Like we really well, miss out. Well, the full life. The full like life, Like the really yeah. full life. We miss out on it if we're trying to, yeah. to numb out all of those hard things. So if someone's in suffering right now listening and they're like, why are you reading my mail today? Or <laughs> I got to pick up this book, you know, and what would you, what words of wisdom would you give someone who doesn't know what this season of suffering will bring or how to look at the season that they may, no one's ever ha- had them look at, what would you say? I don't know. I mean, I guess my only words of wisdom would be to reach out to somebody. Like, it's it's a hard, you know, text to send to say, like, hey, I am hurting right now. But even just to say, can we go for a walk? I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. Like, there are... I think in your mind, you get stuck and you think nobody cares about that. But there are so many people that care about the little and the big things in your life. And, you know, as you're putting this book in your Amazon cart, pick up your phone and text somebody and let them know that you're hurting. Yeah, Yeah, reach out. Yeah. Just tell someone. Be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else the professional no, counselor I mean, would say in the room? Counseling's great, you know, counseling being is great. seen in counsel- yep. shameless counseling plug. But yeah, I think <laughs> just being seen, being seen by your community, by God, by others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't be alone. Yeah. We'll put Jay's phone number in the yeah, show. Yeah. Now. <laughs> it's uh, 720. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, th- I think that's the hardest. That's always been the hardest thing for me is to be known, mm. to be seen. And so that's probably the hardest thing for everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's your first step and only step. Yeah. That's the only step you need to take. Yeah. And yeah. Michelle's right. Sometimes it is, you know, as far as counseling goes, like sometimes that's still a hard step to take. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes it's almost easier to start with somebody who doesn't know right. anything about you or your history or who you are or have judgments about you based on how they yeah. see you in public. But just to be able to sit in that room and empty your heart before someone and feel seen and heard. Right. And then your body builds up that courage to keep doing it again and again with exactly. people you know. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes just that person who you're not responsible for exactly. any part of their life yeah. or how they feel about you mm-hmm. is is a game changer. And yep. like you said, it just builds practice and doing that. And then you can go from there and do it with the people around you at church and your community. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's really beautiful. I like that. Okay. Finish this. This podcast out, Melissa, you have... All right, I'm going to read a chapter real quick. <laughs> you have a great section. You read to me the other day. I was like, well, that will... Just, I'll be there. <laughs> I'm going to cue the music and bring it roll out. <laughs> Wrap it up. He may have cried a little bit. Oh, of No, course. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I see some tears. I think good. Okay. It Crying says, is Sorry. suffering does not have to be a barrier. It can be a continual reminder that there's no part of your life where Christ isn't present. There's no place too low for him to stoop. There's no part of your body too inconvenient for him to love. There's no place in your memory too dark for him to hold. There is no weakness too recurring for Christ to care for. He is patient. He is present. Christ is holding us together by the power of his spirit, wrapping his scarred hands securely around the most shattered pieces of our stories and carrying them with care because he chose to be shattered first. And he places them perfectly alongside his own into a mosaic of glory. I know. Amen. Wow. So Amen. Good. So Such good. a pretty picture. Yeah. Michelle, incredible. thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for sharing your story and so your heart. fun yeah. to be here. Thanks for inviting me, you guys. Seriously, yeah. it was a blast. Hey, go check out this book, This Too Shall Last. KJ Ramsey. You Give can her find a it. follow on Instagram, too. Book. Yeah, she's a worthy follow. She's on the, so good. She's so good. Hey, Calvary, if you're one of those people that are suffering right now, don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to connect with you. You can always go to calvarybible.com. I know that seems artificial, but that is a great place for you to submit a prayer request, get on the staff emails to let us know what's going on in your world. We would love to step in with you, be the body, be the church, get you in a community. I know it's scary. I know it's hard, but reach out. Talk to you soon.